slicing cast. Once you like, obviously the one joint is okay, then you got the two joints. You're like, oh, a little bit better. Once you like, zing, 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 yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like you feel the power. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. Now I'm out here. I'm yeah. out here battling. Yeah. We um, live. We live, baby. All right, let's go. Rock paper scissors. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Play for I don't know. I won. So we're gonna talk about what we read, what we watched, and a couple things we we did on the gaming sticks. So first off, we've talked about it a couple times already. Um, what is there? What is there left to say about know. this book? Malice. Malice. We read Malice, and I tweeted that John Gwynn is a TBR destroyer. Destroyer. All I want to do is, is hop in the banished lands. And so we actually buddy read this with our big homie Aaron from Book Busy. Hey, money. Um, and she left us. And you know, we read this. And then, like two weeks later, she had finished the whole. She had no four sympathy. Books. She was. Yeah. She, she didn't even. She didn't even ask if we wanted. If we wanted to read with her. Yeah. She was just like, she's like, y'all slow. He's. <laughs> You know, she's like, y'all yeah. pacing. Yeah, she's basically like, y'all remedial readers. <laughs> and like, and, you know, I'm, I'm super advanced. So it's like, oh, dang. He is a master of getting you invested in characters in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Like you will feel like someone is your best friend, someone is a family member, someone is your mortal enemy, yeah. all within like 50 pages. Yep. You know, like yep. you just like, oh, I, I did like, you know, and so I, I just, I just already, my heart already hurts for the attachment I'm going to have for some of these characters who I know are going to get the X. Like, I don't know when or how they're going to get X, but I know they're going to get X, and my heart already breaks before already, getting there. Already. So, nah, um, um, a lot of people argue that the first half of it is like really like cliche type of, um, you know, fantasy yeah. tropes. Uh, but then towards the middle of it, um, a lot of people who stuck with it also say that um, it, it, changed the game they were they were like happy with it and yeah. it was amazing so um if you started off that book and you were like yeah it's not for me go back and finish it and yeah. maybe you'll change your mind second book we knocked out was bloodline, bloodline by the big yeah. homie will white yep, yep. so this is volume nine in the cradle series mm -hmm. um, again you've heard us rant and rave about how much we love cradle um and and this is one of our favorite series and you know again in all honesty this wasn't my favorite one which kind of like not it kind of hurt a little bit like it wasn't bad by any means no. i don't think will white can write a bad book in my opinion like he can write books that are astounding and some of that are just good this was just good um but i think that it's just because the last two books probably were if i had to rank them probably like my favorite books out of the series they were really and good. so they were like and if you want to have an anime comparison, they were like the Cell arc, the Frieza arc of Dragon Ball Z. Like they were like that. And then this one is like coming off those arc. It's like yeah. the come down and, and the setup. It's starting a new arc. Yes, yeah, it's, it's starting a new yeah. arc. You know, it's setting up things for the next book. So a lot of that was set up. Um, you know, you did some backtracking to some previous areas and mm -hmm. some previous characters, which is cool to see. Um, but it, it feel like it didn't move the needle that forward that much. Um, but again, like Quincy said, it set up a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so which obviously is necessary. Um, but again, it, it if anything, at the end of the book, I'm just as hyped to read book ten. Like I'm like, oh, book ten should oh, be yeah. dope, you know. Oh yeah. So um, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. he he always accomplishes getting me excited for the next book. And I think there's only gonna be twelve. So I'm, I'm the light is at the end of the tunnel, man. You know. I'm sad. I'm sad. I'm like, oh no, I don't want it to end either. I don't want it um, to end. Kratos just, I mean, and the way he set the world, he can write so many more books in the world. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. But no, nah, Kratos nah, is still yeah. among our favorites. Cra uh, Blood, Bloodline was a good book. It was not our favorite of the nine. Correct. Exactly. So I actually didn't finish this and I feel bad because it's been a minute since I did not finish a book. But I think I was just not in the mental space to absorb all you have that to be in this the book was trying you gotta to do. be you gotta be um i think about like maybe a week or so before we finished this we we were um before we filmed this video q was we were, and q were checking in and i was like all right man i'm gonna buckle down i'm gonna like i'm gonna, I'm gonna like speed read into it I'm gonna, I'm gonna go hard and he was like i don't know if you should do that i'm like wow he's like this ain't the kind of book you want to do that like you you want to savor this like it's almost like going to a wine taste and just yeah. going like yeah, you can't. You can't. You no, know, you're, you're supposed to. You're supposed to like. Interesting. It was. It was a great book. GGK does not let you down with his writing style, his prose, um, the storytelling, all amazing. Mm -hmm. But coming off of something like Malice, mm -hmm. and then jumping into this, 
you you're doing yourself a disservice. It's almost like I wish I had stopped reading for like a month. Yeah. And then went back in and started reading this. Now it doesn't take place of our number one standalone Tigana at all Tigana, Tigana, however you say it. But it was really good. Like the pros, it was just so like it, his pros had a cadence. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> you had to get used to it. And then once you did, it was like so phenomenal phenomenally written. I feel like I can't judge this book yet. I have to read it like two more times <laughs> before I For can you, before I can fully take it in. Because like, it, I, I was like, is he? It's like he just his, the way he writes is just so melodic. Like it's just so dope. And then I got to the end, and it has the X. This is only our second book from GGK. Yeah, only the second book. And so when I got to the end, it tells you about the author. He lives in Canada. Da 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 da. da and he has these books, and he also has. Uh, two books full of poems and stuff. I was like, oh, okay. A poet. You know, he's a poet. He's a poet. Yeah, and, yeah. and when I was describing how I felt about this book to him, he was like, it sounds, there's there's authors and there's artists. Artists, yes. And my man GK is an artist. Artist. And we're going to go into a couple things that we watched, um, which I, I think it's a, kind of had a mixed month of things. So first, Thunder Force. You watched that, right? I forced it. <laughs> I forced it. That shit was trash. None of the jokes landed to me. Like none, of, nothing landed. And even in this outlandish list, nothing landed. And I was like, "What?" Like it had potential. Some of the jokes were from Melissa. Were were good. She just didn't deliver it, yes. or it wasn't filmed in a way, or edited in a way that the delivery was like punchy. Yeah. And so, and, I, and like she usually sometimes delivers for me so that's why i was like i didn't know if it was delivery or was the writing i was like it, something just didn't mesh man yeah. I, I wasn't a fan I, I me and my wife watched it and she was just and she was like mm. I was, and i was like mm. so yeah i'm mm. same page yeah uh concrete cowboy that was pretty interesting it was interesting um, it was interesting it was interesting um q i'm gonna go ahead and steal what q said because i liked it i think q q said that this is one of those movies that was good because it was based off of a true story, and yeah. I, and they actually use some real actors who are part of that, um, like horsemen, cowboy clan. Um, it was in New Orleans. It was um, in Philly. In Philly, in Philly, like there were actual people who were part of this this group. Yeah. Um, and they played the actors, and I think that was really cool. That like was cool. that was cool. So um, in, you know, main two, Caleb and your boy Idris. Uh, Idris you know, they I think they were pretty good. You know, yeah. I mean. It's interesting to get a view of what these people went through, what their life was like, and mm -hmm. kind of some of the the tragedy that happened yeah. to them and their their horse stables and stuff like that. I think that was the most interesting yes, part about yes. it. Um, and you can see the su superfluousness with the whole other storyline yeah. with your boy and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so no, it was it was interesting. Like I wasn't mad when I was like, oh, okay. yeah. I was like, okay, like this is interesting. It was cool. So it was cool. It was cool. That I, yeah. that was it. That, that was, was it. Oh, that was straight. It was cool. Agree. Agree. You know, um, a mid-tier Netflix joint. Mid-tier Netflix. So that's why that's why this is why I'm saying a mix because Thunder Force is blah. You know, Cat Creek Combo was like yeah, it was okay. It was yeah. okay. Falcon and Winter Soldier was wow. That joint was banging. So we watched God. Falcon and Winter Soldier. I thoroughly I don't know enjoyed which it. Episode man. was my favorite. But I have to say that finale though. Finale was good. That man. finale, bro. That was good. When he was and preaching. I, yeah, he was <laughs> preaching. I mean, he had he he was new suited up. You know, I mean, he had his. It was, I, don't, I don't. I don't like the suit. You don't like the suit? I don't it, like it, the suit. I like. It has this. It's, it's true to the comic book origins. Yeah, which I like. I like it. It. Um, the little joint with it go up to like the side of his yeah. like cover yeah. the side of his head like look. Mm -hmm. But I so. People, I can't understand you being mixed on the suit. I think it's fine. I do like the functionality of it because it did stuff that we never seen. Mm -hmm. It was one part where like something crashed on it and he used the wings to cover himself. That was fire. That was dope. Or and like then when, when he, he used the, um, the when they was fighting and he used the wings to stuck the, in the ground yeah. to like that's fire. that was fire. So that was fire. The, the wings are doing more, and I was yeah. like, oh, like the, okay. The suit and the wings, everything is very functional. Functional. The functionality of it is a plus, and he's and he's learned to use. He's not gonna win a, a suit fashion contest. No, no. <laughs> who, who you think had the best suit in MCU? I mean, it's either a tie between Iron Man or Black Panther. Yeah. Those are two dopest suits, um, yeah. in my opinion. It it was it was very entertaining. Um and it tried to say more uh than most Marvel movies try to say about yeah, society. Very social um, very social aware. aware. Um it had good fighting. I mean, cause the the act uh, I think the dude from John Wick wrote a couple episodes which mm -hmm. you could tell because they was like 
It was very technical. We enjoyed Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was no, I, I liked it. And they posed like interesting questions of like uh, a black man holding up the the shield, you know, the shield, yeah. you know, being the the representative of America. America. You know, how is that? Yeah. You know? So this isn't on our list, but I watched Serpent. Serpent it's on Netflix. Um, the Serpent. Okay. So this is based off of a true story too. Oh, okay. And so it's um I think it's about eight or nine episodes. Okay. And so this dude is in like he's like a con artist living in Thailand, I think. Okay. And so he's getting all these like took place in like the seventies or whatever, sixties, seventies. All these tourists are coming. So he's like getting them, stealing their passports, oh, like big like, like a, scamming them. Scamming people. Okay. But like then he gets to a point where he's like starting to kill them. And so like he's killing these tourists and taking their 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 identification and then going to travel with it and like buying uh, buying like rubies and selling them and trying to get it back to Europe and it's just like this whole thing and it's based off a true story. Okay, I'm watching it. Yeah, it's called the serpent. It's called okay. the serpent and it, he snakes his way out of things. These little snakes. That's why they yeah, like named it the serpent. serpent. Is the Beauty and the Baker. Beauty and the Baker. Yeah. Beauty and the Baker. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. So that's not I a Netflix it. original. That was an ABC. C show, ABC show that ended up been, being that, canceled, and then Netflix, Netflix picked it up and gave and it so the now it's in like the top, <laughs> the top ten, top ten because it was on Netflix. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I think Q first told me on Wife about it. He compared it to Jane the Virgin. Yeah. Um, which I definitely see the similarities, especially with like you know the the Latin culture. Yeah, anyway. it, it's a good little feel good show. It is. Um, it you is. know, like light drama, yeah. like you know, a little, you know. Um, mm -hmm. whimsical at times. Yeah. Um, no, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So yeah, I mean, I don't think you thought keep thought I was gonna hate it for some reason. Um, but I enjoyed it. So I told his wife when I, I spe explicitly when I came in the house, I was like, "Oh, wifey, check out this show. I think you really like it. It's cool." Me and my wife we watched it. We thought it was you know saying straight whatever blah blah blah. He was up there like, I was like, "I'm not telling. This ain't for you." It's for you. Uh, yeah. well, why he discriminate from you? Like, like why he discriminates something like that? Like a mediocre watch. Me, it was a mediocre because we had some things that were really good. Some things that was. Uh, Did sorry. you watch um, Blood Ball? I haven't finished it. You haven't finished it. I'm like maybe two or three episodes, and that's why I didn't want to okay. say about it. Cause yeah, I watched like, it. You finished the whole thing? Yeah, I finished yeah, it. Yeah. I, um, yeah. 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 I'm, I'll, I'll finish it soon. I, I I haven't watched enough to form a full opinion on He's it. He's gonna form his full opinion. Only thing I really like the. The best thing I liked about it was the storyline of like the, the like the thieving crew or whatever, mm -hmm. and and then I went back and I realized that that's what the book that everyone recommends is that follows that crew. I think. Gotcha. Um, so I was like, let me go buy the, the books and check it out. So, but other than that, the rest of it was like, okay, <laughs> we spent a lot of money and it looked nice. Yeah, they had good actors. So. Right. Well, I got a couple things on the gaming section, man. Um, I don't know if you finished this, but Jedi Fallen Order? I didn't finish you it. Finished? I feel like I, I got like three hours probably left in the game. Okay, um, I, sit down. So I didn't finish the story, but what I can fully comment on is the best thing about this game, in my opinion, I agree is the level design. Yeah. Level design is level design amazing. Is 81. 81. They did a, oh my god. They did a really great job on level design. Um, like almost up there with like God of War yeah. type level designs. It was, it God was, of War 3 had really good level design, I yeah. think. This one does too. Yeah, I, I I was never mad to go back to other worlds because you open, once you got the power and you open up a new area and then like you you learn something new about the story. You, you use your newest game mechanic to fight your newest enemies. So level design was really good. You go into this um, forest and then you start climbing this tree mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's like like you see the tree in the distance and then you finally get to the tree and then you're climbing up the tree and you yeah. see everything. See everything. Just, yeah. Just, level design is a one. Um, the Even when you when you crawl into like crevices and stuff, there would be like hi hieroglyphs and like designs on the walls, and, and it was good. It was good. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Level design was a one. I would say the combat felt clunky for like the first half, but like the second half, it once you better. opened up all the possibilities, it felt more fluid. But overall, it was straight. Um, and then very quick note: me and wife played the Overcooked game. Yeah. Um, it somebody in the comments on the video say like it's a relationship tester mm -hmm. breaker. We we still together happily, I believe. But that joint it definitely makes you try to if it makes your communication see if it's good or not. Cool. So if y'all made it to the end of the video, hit us with a flashlight because y'all like discovered what we that don't make no sense. Just hit us with a flashlight, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got.